Hi, everybody. This is Renee Winston, and I am the proud owner of InnerGinger.com. And InnerGinger is all about helping women to tap back into their spiciness, that inner spiciness that we have, that we somehow, some way, kind of got buried underneath because of life and living. And um, I help women to tap back into that inner spice that we have in ourselves and live the life that is beautiful and exciting and spicy and just juicy. Um, and I know for myself, I am 52 years old, and I remember my life being just not happy. I was li not living my authentic self. And there's many reasons why I was not living my authentic life. And one of them, or three of them that I'm going to talk about today is because I dealing with endometriosis. I do not have many children because of the endometriosis, because it caused infertility in my life. And uh, the third thing is childlessness. Because of infertility, I do not have any children of my own. I did not birth any children of my own. And so back when I was in my 20s and 30s, I was going through the question, well, when are you going to have kids? At the time, I wasn't married. So I was going through those questions like, when are you going to have kids? When are you going to um, have that baby? And I would say, I would get like the general answer, the best answer I could give, which was, well, I have 10 nieces and nephews, so my sisters contribute to the world's population. That was my answer to it. That was my around the bout way of responding to that uh, question. Uh, but um, I was very hurt that I couldn't say that, well, yeah, I'm you know, going to get married and have kids. That wasn't happening for me at that time when I was that age. But now that I'm 52, I am on the cusp of hearing the famous words, well, what about your grandkids? You gonna have any grandkids? <laughs> and uh, uh, that answer is no. Now, mind you, uh, I, I got married when I was 42 to a beautiful, wonderful husband, and he has two boys from his first marriage. Their mom is alive and well and managing the, the boys, and we manage the boys too, but they have their mom. You know, I am Miss Renee. I'm not stepmama. I'm not, uh, please call me mother or anything like that. I am Miss Renee to these two boys who are in college right now. And uh, so I'm going now, going through this phase of, oh, so when are you going to have grandchildren? Or when are you going to uh, be able to uh, um, have grandchildren in your life? So that's my next phase in this whole scenario that, us women go through in regards to dealing with endometriosis, infertility, and childlessness. Now, in regards to infertility, infertility can come from many other um, diseases or diseases that that could happen in the human body. So there's endometriosis, there's PCOS, there's fibroids in the in the uterus. It is so many different things that can cause a woman not to be able to conceive. And even with those, there's even the one where it doesn't even include the body. There's also infertility based on the fact that you met somebody that you're in a relationship with and they already have kids and they don't want, even though you're married to them or having a relationship with them, they don't want to have um, uh, uh, any more additional children. Or you just so happen to be in this life where you just don't have anybody. Now, I... When I, like I said, I got married when I was 42. And with that, I made a decision that when I was in my 20s and even a teenager, that I was not going to bring a baby into this world when I thought I could, unless I was married. That was That's my thing. That's my morals. I don't put that on anybody. You live your life the way you want to live your life. For me, I just decided that I was not going to bring a baby into this, into this world without a mother and father. And I want the father to be there and because that's how I was raised. I was raised with my mom and my dad. I had that particular type of lifestyle, and that's what I wanted for my child. So uh, when I found out that I couldn't get pregnant, I'll go into my story in a little bit. Uh, it just this, this made my situation even more hurt and harmful and it just really was thank you for the, 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 the love. <laughs> thank you. It just made uh, my life just a little bit more difficult to live with. So 
get into my story my story i um and i'm hoping that anybody who is dealing with these three items endometriosis infertility and childlessness i would love for you to come on board and just chat with me because when i was going through this i felt alone i felt so lonely i felt that i was the only one going through this i had no one to talk to now mind you i had sisters all my sisters were married and they had kids and i was the one that wasn't married and didn't have any kids and I felt not like an outsider per se, but I felt that what I was going through, they could not ever understood or understand uh, my pain. So I, like any normal teenager back in the, in the uh, I think it was in the 70s, late 70s, I got my period uh, on time, 13 years old right after school let out in june of that year and boom i got the strangeness coming out of me and then i'm like I'm bleeding i'm like what is this and i call my mom who she was, she was at work i was like mom i am bleeding between my legs yes yes sherry w81 yes alone affect the others have a hard time relating yes they do have a hard time relating because and I get back to my story in a second because, and it's and it it really shows itself up. And I'm not knocking this, but it really shows itself up on Mother's Day. And on Mother's Day, I feel like such an outcast because I can't celebrate it in a way that other women can. And um, I remember I read a story where this woman she was really kind of ticked off because. Whenever they had to talk about a woman in the news, they always had to say that she was a mother, which is beautiful and understood. It just hurts when you know that if, if, if God forbid, there's a woman that's in the news and she doesn't have any kids, what are they going to call her? Because the first thing that comes out of people's mouth is I'm a mom. So what, what comes out of the mouth if, if a woman is not a mother? She's just a woman. So this, I mean, there's so many things I could talk about that. But anyway, I call my mom up. I say, mom, I got, I'm bleeding between my legs. I don't know what this is. I'm 13 years old. I have no idea. No one talked to me about becoming a woman. And that's one of the things that is so shameful in our society that we don't teach our girls about when that day comes, how to prepare for it, what to expect, how to manage it. I mean, I, I I was just floored by the fact that I had no idea what was going on with me. I thought I was dying. <laughs> and so I told my mother and she said, ah, just go underneath the kitchen, uh, the, the bathroom sink. And underneath there, there's some pads, just put on the pad. So I got the pad and I'm looking at it. I'm like, what am I supposed to uh, do with this? this pad i don't know what to do <laughs> and at the time it, we didn't have the pads that we have now where you just pull the plastic off and you just put it on the panty and you just slip on the panty and you go about your business or you know we, I, I didn't have all that and plus my mom didn't have any tampons it was just strictly pads so it was pads with the with the thing that you hook onto a belt i had no idea so my introduction to becoming a woman was very tragic. And I'm praying that other women who have daughters, parents who have daughters, teach your girls before they start having their menstruation about what to expect, how to manage their periods. So that's my public service for today. But anyway, so I began at the age 13 by the age of, 14, I was experiencing what I thought was PMS. It was actually my endometriosis that I was dealing with. It was terrible. I remember on my uh, 15th birthday, I went to school. I was at the bus stop. I was having my period. I had my period on my birthday three times. Had it at 15 years old. I thought I was going to die. I'm, I left school. I was coming home on the bus and train. Here I am at the bus stop waiting for the slow bus to come, to come so I could get on it, so I could get home and lay down and take my meds and get myself 
manage myself so I could deal with this pain. And I was just waiting for this bus and I'm looking down, I'm in New York City, so I'm looking down at the ground and I swear that cold, concrete, hard looking ground looked like the softest pillow to me because all I wanted to do was lay down waiting for this bus. Again, I got my period again on my birthday at age 30. I was m turning 30 and I got my period. Oh my God. And dealing with the endometriosis, I thought I was going to die because I was in so much pain. And then again, I got my period just last month <laughs> in October. My birthday's in October. Oh, my birthday. But it was a whole different story. It was actually beautiful. I had no pain. Mind you, I'm in menopause. I was in uh, two years into menopause. And then boom, my period came down on my birthday. But I had absolutely no pain. And I will get to that either later or in another broadcast. But anyway, endometriosis affects about 5 million women in the United States. That's a lot of women who are suffering. They, it takes about 14, anywhere from seven to about 14 years before they get the official, um, um, for they diagnose with endometriosis. And the only way a woman can be diagnosed right now in regards to endometriosis is through um, surgery, is going through a laparoscopy where they go in, they take, do little slits on the belly, they go in and take a look around and they will see the implants. Now, what is endometriosis? Endometriosis is where the lining that's inside of the uterus, which is the is is the which creates the menses, the inside, the, the portion that gets bled out, the portion that is within the uterus, somehow, some way, and this and yes, a lot of women do go diagnosed with um with about endometriosis, so that is correct. Um, thank you for your comment. What is, I would love to know what your, your first name is. If you don't mind typing that in so I could call you by your first name. I think it's probably Sherry, but I just want to make sure that that's what it is. That the, it, the that material, that tissue ends up, Sharon, thank you, Sharon. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and um, it ends on outside of the uterus. So it, it, it will fall on the outside of the uterus. It will fall on the fallopian tube. Sometimes it will be within the fallopian tube. It will fall on the uterus. It will be on the small intestines, large intestines. It will fall on the bladder. It will go even up as high as a woman's lung. And they have, I've heard reports about it going into women's brain. And so whenever those tissues that have landed in various parts of the body that are not with inside the uterus, when you go through your monthly cycle, when your estrogen levels and, and progesterone levels are going, is doing its rhythm um, of, of phases, it's going through its rhythm that is, that is, um, that the pituitary gland is putting out these hormones, putting out the signals for these hormones to be produced. While while your uterus is going through the same changes, those tissues are going through the same changes too. So when you're having your menstrual your menstrual cycle, when your 20 days are up, and you start to have a period, those tissues that's landed throughout the body in regards to endometriosis is having a period too. It is 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 going through a cycle, and it causes a lot of pain because it lands. For some women, it lands on particular nerves and it irritates the nerves. Some women have endometriosis and they don't have any symptoms of it whatsoever, but they do have the tissues that are located outside of the uterus. Some women like me, I was out. I had to manage my endometriosis this way. Now, everybody have, a lot of women have their own methods of dealing with this particular type of disease. Way The way that I dealt with it, was I got on birth control pills. Didn't need it because I was infertile. The endometriosis actually destroyed my fallopian tubes. I had my first laparoscopy at about age 27. And that's when she went in and she found out that I had endometriosis. 
But she told me that my fallopian tubes were, one was flip, you know, the, the fallopian tubes are supposed to be hovering over the ovaries to catch the egg. Well, my fallopian tube, it was flipped on one side so it couldn't catch an egg. The other one was hugging my, my ovary so it couldn't catch an egg if it tried. And plus, I had blockage within my fallopian tubes. And so she just did the laparoscopy. She did the diagnosis. She just cleaned me up. She put me on a little prom. I'm not going to get into that right now. And sent me on my merry way. And Lupron puts you into menopause. Well, um, when I was also about 29 years old, I had my my second and final surgery in regards to endometriosis. And this doctor went in and she cleaned me out in regards to she removed my the majority of my ovaries. She removed my fallopian tubes. She kept my uterus intact. And I was rendered with infertility. Um, I knew something was wrong with me in the beginning um, when I was became sexually active because, and it was a time before AIDS and everything, so just bear with me because I'm a little bit more older. <laughs> um, I just, pregnancy was just not happening for me. Uh, it just wasn't. So in dealing with the, the endometriosis, those plants where those tissues land is having a period too. Now, the total reason why endometriosis is happening, why why is it happening in women, that jury is out. Um, I hear so many stories where number one, endometriosis can be an autoimmune disease that the body, these implants are happening, the body doesn't know what to do with it, so the body is constantly attacking it. And um, it could bring up a whole host of other problems and, and issues that a woman can go through when dealing with endometriosis. When your immune system turns on you, is a whole other um, situations that goes on with, within the woman's body too. So they say it is an is a autoimmune disease. I've read that there were babies, and this is very morbid, and I do apologize for this, and I, I hate, hate saying this, but when they had do abortions and they do autopsies on the babies, or when a baby is born still and they do autopsies on the baby, they and a baby girl, they actually found endometriosis on a baby. So it can be even happening in in um euro when the baby is forming, baby girl is forming inside of the mama womb that the tissues for the uterus somehow, some way, ends up outside of the uterus. I found that fascinating <laughs> that, um, that this can be something that a woman can, a, a young baby can bring into the, who is being brought into this world already have endometriosis. And I can't remember what the third, the third uh, thought mindset about why endometriosis happened, it will come to me in a little bit. So it's, it's in utero, um, and, and when the baby is in, is in the mommy belly, and it, it could develop from there. It also could be from um, auto, autoimmune disease. And I can't remember the third one. I do apologize. It will come to me later. But moving on. Um, so that's to do with endometriosis. It just took my life. I I just couldn't do anything. I will. I got on birth control pills to manage it. So when the birth control pills, when I started it, because I couldn't get pregnant, so I was on birth control pills. I took it in a way so that I made my period come down on a Friday at four o'clock, so I could be in bed, stay in bed Friday night through Saturday, through Sunday, so I could get up on Monday and go to work and not be in too much pain. I was one of those ladies, fortunately, that I did not bleed heavily. I did not bleed heavy at all. But the pain was so bad that you thought that I, I was having, you know, I was. it was like Niagara Falls. It was not. I was fortunate in that area, and I thank God for that. But 
the pain nonetheless was it took my breath. I mean, I remember one time it just took my breath away. I remember one time I was dealing with an ex-boyfriend and got my period and I was walking from one end to the house to the other and the pain was so bad. It felt like and don't miss you also felt like as this soul was doing Indian burns with inside my body and it was constant. It was never going away. I, the only time it went away when I took 800 milligrams of Motrin, which is crazy. I was jacking up my, my liver. It was crazy. Um, and I remember walking and I took my meds and I was walking down the hallway and I just fell out in pain. I passed out. It was so painful that I passed out from the pain. He didn't know what to do with me because he knew that I suffer very poor. I suffer really badly from uh, this particular type of, type of disease. Uh, I remember one woman that I, I, I knew of at a job, her pain was so bad, she just fell to the floor and was just holding her belly. And there was this other woman who was just laughing. I wanted to punch her in her face so bad because you you just don't understand when when you look at a woman and she says she's in pain a lot of people are like ah you're not in pain you know because you don't see blood doesn't mean it's pain so i don't know why when a woman says oh i have or someone says oh i have a headache it's respected but when a woman says my belly hurts my my insides hurts um i have endometriosis and there is no understanding i i, I just don't understand that because I got really none. And I got to go through a whole host of other stories, but I'm not uh, at this time. Um, so that's endometriosis, it's a very devastating disease. It is a disease that I don't wish on anybody because it takes your life away. I had my period and I counted it 437 times. And 436 of those times, I was in pain in bed surviving i am yes yes sharon i really I, i'm with you i don't i really just like being told you don't look sick that is it's, it's mind-boggling very mind-boggling um this endometriosis is um it, it just stops your life it stops your life i mean there's women who commit suicide they 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 become depressed on top of dealing with endometriosis, they're dealing with infertility and childlessness, which is a whole other set of, of, of feelings and problems and hurt and, and just, just that, that, that a woman has to go through. And even, um, even for myself, I had to do with infertility because of the endometriosis. Um, in regards to infertility, I chose not to for me. I chose not to do IVF. I remember reading a story where uh, this woman in, in England who, and I, I was in my 20s when I read this story. She had 20, she'd done 20 IVFs. And when she did the artificial in vitro uh, insemination, she developed ovarian cancer. Now, I don't know if she's preconditioned to it. I have no idea, but I know that and I read uh, uh, reports about it that take doing the IVF can cause in some women ovarian cancer. But when I read that she did 20 of these IVFs I, and, and develop ovarian cancer, I decided for myself that I will not put my body through that. My body has has gone through enough. Yes, it's very sad. My body has gone through enough in with endometriosis. I did not want to put my body in any more additional hormonal shifts, dips, and dives to become pregnant. And plus, at the time when I was thinking about having a baby, I didn't have anybody in my life that was worth having a baby with. And I do mean that. I, I, just, I just didn't have anybody in my life that was worth me having um, a relationship with and for them, from, for them to be a daddy to my baby. 
and that's sad but that was my reality and that's what i had to do sharon wrote unfortunately okay sharon thank you so much for coming on i really do appreciate you and i really do appreciate your thoughts thank you i appreciate your love um that uh, uh i couldn't find anybody worthy so i decided that i wasn't going to put my body through ivf and i was going to just live my life and that's what I did. I just lived my life. Um, but I needed support in regards to it. I needed someone to talk to. I couldn't find anybody to talk to. I couldn't find anybody who would give me an ear so I could let go of all the frustration that I had in regards to dealing with infertility, dealing with childlessness, and dealing with uh, with the, the thing that caused me to be in this position. And I remember going i uh, found this this uh this little ad in the local paper up in new york and it talked about i'm not going to give the name but it was at a church and they were uh doing classes or group talks in regards to women who are well people who are going through infertility and so i was like great I could finally find someone to talk to about my feelings in regards to this and the depression, you know, get this, this monkey, this weight off of me. I was in my 30s when I was um, going through this. And so I had called them up to get more information to find exactly where the location at and everything. And I told them my situation. And this woman said to me, well, you're no good for the group because you're not married. This is only for couples who are trying to get pregnant and they can't get pregnant. And I'm like, excuse me, o only for couples? I mean, okay, and I got so mad. <laughs> I was so mad, I hung up, I hung up. Because I was like, what if you was not even sexually active and you was born with a disease that you had to get an operation that kind of cleans you out. And because you're not married, you're not able to talk or even participate in a group, that ticked me off to no end. I was so mad. I was like, really, really? But I didn't have the, the heart in me to go and create my own group. And at the time, there was no internet. <laughs> no, I had not, no social media the way that we have now. And so I had to deal with this by myself. I felt that no one understood my infertility. No one understood the fact that I could not walk down the aisle of a, at, at a supermarket or at a Target or at a Pathmark. I could not walk down the, uh, the baby aisle because this, the whiff of the smell of baby powder, it just sent me off. I would get depressed. I would get hurt. I, I just want to run into a corner and hide. Um, I just couldn't deal with it. So I, I refused to walk down any baby aisle. I also refused to really participate, and I'm sorry about this, but I really feel, really felt I didn't want to participate in any baby shower. Unless it was family and stuff like that, or, you know, best of best friends, uh, you know, my besties. But I, it was difficult going through baby showers. It was difficult saying, oh, Renee, why don't you plan, you know, do, do a baby shower, you know, help me plan it. Difficult. And not because I didn't love them. It was far from it. It was just the fact that I have to deal with my own issues of not being able to conceive and have my own child. And which brings me to the, the next step of being um, childless. There's, like I said, different types of being childless. Some of it is, I call my childlessness childless um childless by circumstance because of my particular type of circumstances which is endometriosis or any other woman who has any type of disease um or who who is in a it was in a um, relationship where the man doesn't want to have children and she wants to have children that is childlessness by circumstance there's also childless there's child free 
Now, child free for me is a decision that one makes for themselves. And I applaud you, you know, you are doing what you're supposed to do for your life. And, and hats off to you. I'm with you 1000%. There are people out there, there are women out there who choose not to have children. I applaud them. I, I see nothing wrong with that. But for me, I am childless by, uh, by circumstance. And this is what I deal with every single day. Now, I do have godchildren. I do have nieces and nephews. I have 10 of them. I uh, do have two boys from my husband's first marriage. Um, the sad part is that I really took distance a lot. I've created a lot of distance. I've created a lot of walls in regards to dealing with this, in regards to how can I, as a woman, especially as a black woman, just surviving in the United States. I'm black. I'm a woman. I, I don't have kids. I wasn't married. You know, the struggle is tough. I, 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 depression, all this. How can I live a life that was, that was pleasant to me, that was beautiful for me? And sorry for my hair. That was beautiful and pleasant for me. And that was something that I struggle with every single day day. Even now, has a woman who was in her 50s uh, still dealing with endometriosis. I am, su uh, am a survivor. I survived endometriosis. I can even say I survived infertility, even though there is some lingering effects in regards to it. And the childlessness part, I slowly am um, embracing that now slowly embracing that um and because i still have a beautiful life to live and because i still have a beautiful life to live i um besides in my business which is like i said earlier it's called inner ginger i also call myself the endometriosis lifestyle educator because my purpose because i, I had to ask god what is my purpose? Because for a woman, the it's not the main purpose. It's just part of her rights living in the world, in this world, is to become a mom. Well, that was taken away from me for whatever reason. I was That was not part of my experience living in this world. So I had to ask God, what am I supposed to do? What is my purpose? What what I'm supposed to bring into the world if, if, if I could not contribute to the world with a child. And it was creating a business, which is called Inner Ginger. I call myself the endometriosis lifestyle educator because I want, I desire, I have a passion to educate women who are dealing with endometriosis to have a better life. I've gone through the treaches. I've, I've, I've experienced it all. I went through the operations. I did the Lupron. I did so much trying to heal myself. And at the age, when I turned 52 this in October, like I said earlier, I got my period. And it was the most beautiful experience because I had no pain. And I'm wondering, is it because I changed my lifestyle? And because if I change my lifestyle, cause my period not to have any pain at all, then it's time for me to teach other women how they cannot, uh, not not cannot, but how can they reduce the pain and that they have someone who is a, who is a survivor of endometriosis. So I am your sister in this. I could give you that ear, that wonderful, beautiful ear that no one gave me. I am here to give women that ear who are dealing with endometriosis, who are dealing with infertility, who are dealing with childlessness. I am that ear. I am your sister in this. My goal is to help women to um, lessen the pain, the all around pain, because it's total lifestyle. And my goal is to help them to lessen that pain. That is my purpose. That is what I finally realized what God wanted me to do to help women in this. 
So I'm going to be signing off now because I didn't have anybody to come on board and talk to me. I am always here. Uh, my goal is to be here every Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time and open up the seat for other women to talk about their endometriosis, to talk about um, childlessness, to talk about their infertility in regards to not having any kids. The, the, and, and so I really will hopefully one day someone will come on board and just join me and open up because sharing can help with the healing. And so once again, my name is Renee Winston. My website is inner, inner ginger, that's www.inergingerer.com. Um, and I hope you come on board. I do have a beautiful Facebook group right now called Body So Love, and it's all about loving yourself. Uh, it is getting back into self discovery, self-care, and self-love. And that is the space that I'm in right now. I am here to give love, understanding, and support as a sister to any woman who is dealing with endometriosis, infertility, and childlessness. So again, this is Renee Winston. I am signing off right now. Thank you to anybody who is watching this. And even if you're watching the replay, I'm going to post this on YouTube. Uh, just please, um, just come on board with me next next Sunday. I will be on next Sunday to talk at three o'clock Central Time, and we could get together and we could chat. And um, that's it. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you if you're watching the replay on YouTube or on Blab. I am. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And please do spread the word that there is a place where women like us can come together that we could talk and start to start the healing of what we're going through. This is Renee Winston. I'm signing off. Have a beautiful Sunday. Bye.